With Avatar The Way of the Water looking like another James Cameron box office hit, we wanted to take a look at a side of the director not many people know of. A darker side of him. The tea cart flipping, no bathroom breaks, pushing actors to extreme limits side of him that the industry has nicknamed Midge. Jim Backwards. Directing the most expensive movie on three separate occasions, with Avatar 2 potentially being a fourth, Cameron often finds himself under a lot of pressure. Pressure he created as he tries to push film and technology further than any other director. But this in turn makes him a notorious person on set with an aggressive temper and a dictatorial behavior, often putting cast and crew members in dangerous situations. Amy Poehler made a joke during Catherine Bigelow's Zero Dark Thirty Golden Globe Director nomination saying, when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. The entire room laughed as his onset behavior is known around the industry. But since working on the Avatar films, he's actually mellowed out, even stating in an interview regrets he had about how he behaved in older productions. The people who he put through hell still believed he was a good person and was just doing the necessary thing to create some of the best movies of all time, unlike another director we covered. So let's take a chronological deep dive on a few of these wild productions. James Cameron has only directed nine films, although his impact on the industry would make you believe he's done more. His debut was 1982's Piranha 2, The Spawning, and he followed it up with The Terminator in 1984 that was a huge hit critically and very profitable. There was nothing too controversial with these film productions. James Cameron seemed like a normal up and coming Canadian director, but that was until his next film, Aliens that would release two years later. This was one of his funnier film productions and you can't fully blame him for getting so frustrated, but how he handled it was questionable. Let's set the stage. The original film Alien was directed by Ridley Scott, an English director. It was beloved by many, including us here at Filmstack, and at the time, no one thought it needed a sequel. Along comes Cameron, wanting to make a sequel, getting the green light with filming to be done in England at Pinewood Studios, just outside of London. The Pinewood crew were big Ridley Scott fans that didn't like how this unknown arrogant director was making an unnecessary sequel, so the relationship was sour from the start. Cameron wanted to hold screenings of the Terminator to show off his credentials, but none of them would go. In later sections, we'll see that Cameron demands a lot out of his crew, but this Pinewood crew was unionized with strict union rules such as limited overtime and one other thing that had caused a culture clash with Cameron, tea breaks. Tea breaks came at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day where a woman arriving with her tea cart signaled the start of them. They were quickly wearing out their welcome, becoming the bane of James Cameron's existence each time the tea cart rolled in. It was reported that Cameron became so frustrated with tea time due to being on an already tight schedule that he was ready to strangle this poor old lady who was just doing her job. And then one day the tea cart Cart was allegedly damaged, with many reports claiming that Cameron walked up to the tea lady and flipped her cart over in front of everyone. Tea breaks aside, Cameron also described the crew as lazy, insolent, and arrogant. He'd often butt heads with the veteran assistant director, Derek Cracknell, who was in charge of the Pinewood crew. The butting of heads reached a breaking point with the tea breaks, and Cameron was denied the ability to move production somewhere else, so he just fired Cracknell. This led to a mutiny with the Pinewood crew walking off the set in protest. They eventually talked it through, made some compromises, and rehired Cracknell. But producer Gail Ann Hurd said that if she could have, she would have fired and replaced the entire crew that day. Aliens eventually finished filming, despite the crew and Cameron despising each other. But as they wrapped up, he left them with a final message. This has been a long and difficult shoot, fraught by many problems. But the one thing that kept me going through it all was the certain knowledge that one day I would drive out the gate of Pinewood and never come back, and that you sorry bastards would still be here. During this production, an ongoing joke that would continue in later Cameron film productions was born. Some crew members created and wore t-shirts on set with the text, you can't scare me, I work for James Cameron. Cameron, pointing to his abusive and non-compromising ways of directing, something we'll see more of in later productions. Aliens released to glowing reviews and box office numbers and is known as one of the best sci-fi films and sequels of all time. James Cameron followed up Aliens with The Abyss three years later, and it is in this production where we'll see him push the cast and crew a little too hard. 40% of the filming would be underwater, so the cast and crew had to train in underwater diving for a week in the Cayman Islands beforehand. Ahead of them were six months of six day, 70 hour work weeks full of close calls with death. Cameron had a vision for the movie and really pushed everyone to achieve it. The filming location consisted of two giant water tanks that were built inside the unfinished Cherokee nuclear power plant. 
Being behind schedule, the larger of the two tanks was being filled up while still under construction, forcing the crew members to work on skiffs day and night until it was completed. As for the filming itself, author of The Abyss, Orson Scott Card said that James Cameron made everyone around him miserable, and his unkindness did nothing to improve the film in any way, nor did it motivate people to work faster or better. Actors were usually in a depth of 11 meters for no more than an hour at a time, while Cameron and some of the crew were 17 meters deep for five hours at a time. Many near drownings occurred, including the star of the film, Ed Harris, when he needed air but his diver was hung up on some cable only for another diver to rush in, give him the air regulator upside down, filling Harris's mouth with water. Harris drove home crying that day, with the production and Cameron's vision being too much for him. One of these visions was the idea of liquid breathing in the story being created by towing Ed Harris 10 meters deep with a helmet full of liquid. He said this was the worst and most painful moment of filming, being a factor in Harris publicly disowning the film upon release and never wanting to talk about it. Co-star Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio had similar gripes with the film and its production, all pointing to a single scene where her character has CPR performed on her. In this scene, Cameron ordered Harris to frantically slap and pound on Mary Elizabeth's chest while she was topless, only for Harris to notice that they've run out of film, indicated by a light on the camera. No one did anything to stop the scene. This infuriated Mary Elizabeth, to which she yelled, we are not animals, and stormed off the set making them film the scene without her. Many other crew members and even Cameron himself almost drowned due to the conditions within the tank being brutal. A storm ripped a hole in a tarp covering the tank, but due to their limited time, it wasn't fixed and they started shooting at night instead. One night where some of the actors were underwater, the lights suddenly went out, making it so dark that you couldn't see your own hand in front of you. Then there was the blooming algae within the water that would reduce visibility to six meters within hours. They used a lot of chlorine for the tanks, but the long daily exposure to it burnt many of the divers' skin and turned some of their hair white, even causing some to fall out. And Cameron directed in a very dictatorial style during all of this, speaking to the cast and crew through a PA system where they could not respond. And anytime someone complained, he'd respond with, I'm letting you breathe. What more do you want? Oh, and there were no bathroom breaks, a staple in a James Cameron production we'll see moving forward. When asked for one, the answer was to pee in their wetsuits. Cameron admitted to never wanting to go through something like this production again. Leo Burmester, an actor, mentioned that Filming the Abyss was the hardest thing he's ever done, and how James Cameron really pushes you to the edge, but he doesn't make you do anything he wouldn't do himself. And that's where I gained a little respect for him as a filmmaker. There were complaints that some actors were on location for way longer than they needed to be, to which Cameron replied, For every hour they spent trying to figure out what magazine to read, we spent an hour at the bottom of the tank, breathing compressed air. The film went on to get good reviews and mediocre box office numbers, and the t-shirt the crew wore during production this time read, Life's Abyss, and Then You Die. Tamer than the Aliens one. James Cameron directed Terminator 2 in 1991 often considered one of the greatest action films of all time. Nothing too eventful happened in this production, but that doesn't mean it was smooth sailing, as this was the t-shirt for crew members that highlighted many of the things Cameron yelled at them. Three years later, Cameron directed True Lies, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Cameron was very strict with bathroom breaks during this production, and unlike The Abyss, they couldn't just pee in their clothing. It got to the point where Cameron threatened to fire employees who took bathroom breaks. This was especially tough for Arnie, who really needed to go while filming a scene in a fake Harrier jet. Cameron screamed at him, no, you can't. You're a military man on a mission. What if you were a real pilot and had to go on an attack mission? Are you going to land to go to the bathroom? Cameron and Arnie butted heads a few times. On one other instance, Cameron threatened to get Paul Verhoeven to direct the film instead, when Arnie came late one day after touring Washington. These tantrums became normal for Cameron, and the crew brought back the aliens, you can't scare me, I work for Jim Cameron t-shirt. His next film, 1997's Titanic, would be his most ambitious film to date, where he'd crank his rage up to 11. An anonymous crew member described the production as the closest thing to slavery that I've ever laid my eyes on, with nonstop yelling, physical assault, and a ridiculous schedule. It was during this production where the nickname Midge was created. Many shirts were made by the crew for this film, such as, Jim's a hands-on director and I have bruises to prove it. The long hours without breaks were brutal, often 10 hours without a pause, and people would find their schedules thrown off and have lunch at 2 a.m. or breakfast at 4 p.m. And no bathroom breaks as Cameron's stringent schedule didn't account for them. So the cast and crew were 
peeing into the water tanks used for filming. It was reported that the water quickly became filthy with the pee and dirt blowing into it, and that actors splashing around in it were getting kidney infections. Kate Winslet was pretty vocal about the trouble she had during this production. She chipped a small bone in her elbow, got bruised all over, got pneumonia, and had a gash on her knee from falling on the deck. But she also had some issues with the director. She described him as having a temper you wouldn't believe and was genuinely frightened of him at times. She did a scene where she almost drowned after entangling with a coat and Cameron just said, okay, let's go again. Initially, James Cameron didn't want Kate Winslet for the part and nicknamed her Kate Ways a lot when she got it. Unsurprisingly, Winslet said she wouldn't do another movie with him unless she got a shit ton of money. But she is an Avatar too, so maybe she got a good payday or Cameron becoming a more reasonable director in his later years changed her mind. And then there's the PCP chowder incident. Everyone points to James Cameron putting the cast and crew through hell as the reason for the PCP chowder incident. It is believed that an angry crew member spiked the seafood chowder on set with PCP on the last night of filming in Nova Scotia. Many people ate the chowder, including Cameron, with some going in for seconds until they realized something was wrong with it. Cameron made himself throw up to reduce the effects he'd experienced, but most of the others weren't so lucky. There were reports of people being so high they were racing wheelchairs down halls and forming conga lines. Other reports say that many were rushed to the emergency room, but it was unanimously believed to be someone from the inside, with Cameron thinking it was a former crew member with grievances towards him. All of this trouble just for a movie Cameron only made so that he could explore the sunken Titanic. James Cameron released his next film, Avatar, in 2009. It would become the highest grossing movie of all time, beating his previous film and would push film animation and 3D to new heights. It's been reported that he's mellowed out during this production, and the lack of crew t-shirts backs this up. The only thing we can dig up was that if a cell phone rang during filming, he'd nail it to the wall with a nail gun just above the exit so people would remember whenever they left. Cameron denied these rumors, but it was Sam Worthington, the star of Avatar, who brought it up in an interview. Cameron released his next film, a sequel to Avatar, in 2022 and there has been nothing controversial with the production that we could find. It really seems like he improved on his temper and dictatorial style of directing, but he still kept his arrogance that you often see in all his recent interviews. There have been so many stories and interviews that highlight this arrogance, but he lives up to everything he says. I don't think there's another director that pushed the boundaries of blockbusters the way he has. In a 2021 interview, he acknowledged his past behavior and wished he could go back and improve his working relationships with cast and crew members, and that he should have listened more. He realized this while on the set of a Ron Howard film, where he saw Howard valuing his cast and crew above whatever project they were working on. So what's your opinion on James Cameron? Do you think his behavior was necessary to achieve what he did with each film? Comment your thoughts down below. Let us know if you wanna see more videos on other directors in this style, and make sure to subscribe as we have a ton of videos on the way. But until next time, have a good one.